This is a podcast of 98FM's Dublin Talks. Remember, catch the show live Monday to Friday at 10 a.m. 98FM's Dublin Talks with Adrian Kennedy. 98FM. Good morning, Dublin. I'm Adrian Kennedy. This is 98FM's Dublin Talks. As we speak, a uh, hearing is being held in a Dublin hotel by on board Planala uh, into plans to pedestrianise the area of College Green uh, outside the front gates of uh, Trinity. This morning, taxi drivers were faced with a ban on driving southbound through College Green from 7 until 10am and they are none too happy. We've sent our Jer- Jamie Moore uh, down to um, the, uh, gr- the uh, down to O'Connell Street to talk to some of the taxi drivers and what better way to get there from our studios to the uh, to the Gresham than by taxi. So over to you Jamie. Yes Adrian, I'm just outside 98 FM here with Ed who's as you know one of our uh, regular callers and listeners to Dublin Talks. Ed how are you? Not too bad Jamie, how are you? Great thanks Ed, thanks for having the chat. We are going to jump off now and try and make our way to O'Connell Street. Uh, what's your overall views on the news over the weekend and today that you're not going to be allowed to drive across College Green between 7 and 10? in the middle of the week in the mornings which is at rush hour time it's going to cause absolute mayhem apart from the whole traffic situation of having to divert around different streets and side streets we have to now try and explain to our passengers uh, why their uh, why their taxi fare is going to be more than what they had anticipated which is going to cause more problems and more arguments between passengers and drivers as well so ed's going to now just uh drive off we're on the way now to O'Connor Street Adrian where there's a hearing ongoing at the moment with on board Planala all about this choice I better put on my seatbelt because otherwise there will be beeping in the background so Ed I'm a passenger and you're going to collect me say on O'Connor Street say at the spire and I want to get to work here uh, which we're in Marconi House on Diggs Lane beside the Harry Lemon pub how are you going to get me there in the morning I will have to divert down back uh, Gardner Street I to uh, go over the bridge there at the customs house up around by City Quay and up around by Merrion Square I believe across St Stephen's Green and then down to Marconi House fair wise that would probably put about an extra maybe 10 euro on it and it's fair to say there you've had to actually work out the route that you need to take and most of the taxi drivers in Dublin don't even have to think where they're going if you're going to go from north side to south side south side to north side you know that that route is the main route you're going to take to get you towards that area and now you're going to have to really think where you're going and it's going to add a tenner onto my fare absolutely yes which is which is just going to cause so many arguments it's going to cause a spike in complaints to the national transport authority and as usual the national transport authority just won't care when did you first hear about this idea and when did you hear that they've decided over the weekend or late last week that it was actually going to become a reality i've been um i've been listening to the media reports there for the last couple of weeks when the proposal was first floated i actually didn't think that they would be silly enough to actually go ahead with it but uh hey you can uh you can never uh counter guess what uh, people are going to do like that it's a ridiculous proposal it's going to cause mayhem and I'm, I'm correct in saying that not too many of the taxi drivers or the taxi, taxi driver union were spoken to or really thought about in this at all? No, none. No, absolutely none. Uh, I mean, the uh, taxi drivers unions should, should have put a, a, a stronger counter proposal and a stronger argument uh, against this proposal to, to the National Transport Authority. But they just aren't doing their job. Now, just over the last couple of weeks since the Lewis Cross City has started, traffic has become a lot heavier. I noticed even last week there was a Lewis that was blocking the yellow box outside the Shelburne Hotel because it couldn't get through because there was another Lewis there and stuff. You know, there are problems with traffic in this area. We're just now at, at College Green looking at Trinity College here in traffic. We can see the sign saying buses only and etc, etc. But the traffic has got a lot worse in the last couple of weeks, is that fair to say? The traffic has got absolutely appalling. I mean, the other morning I arrived uh, on O'Connell Street from Calbury Street, and I do remember specifically, it was five past nine in the morning. I actually passed Trinity College at 22 minutes past 10. Well, it was just appalling. And then I'm trying to explain to the passenger, I say, look, I'm really sorry. And of course, I felt really guilty about the uh, astronomically large fare that the uh, uh, passenger was left with. And I was forced to make, well, well, I wouldn't say forced, forced, but out, 
my conscience got to me and I uh, reduced the fare by half. Wow, very nice. I'm not sure many other taxi men will do the same. We're just about to cross O'Connell Bridge now, Ed. So a final question. If the powers that be were to ask you for your views on what they can do to ease the traffic but allow taxis to go through College Green as they have done for the last X number of years, what would you say to them? I would say that the whole proposal about banning taxis needs to be seriously rethought. That the traffic proposals uh, and the traffic management system should have been thought out before the loose became live and they've done an incredibly bad job. They need to sit back down with, with all the stakeholders and talk this through without just single-handedly banning taxis, which is, again, just going to cause mayhem. Because at the end of the day, I was reading a piece online this morning, but, you know, some taxi drivers were saying that it will actually cost you business even though the odd fare you get will be increased. People will decide if they're going from north side to south side, they might jump on a Dublin bike, they might jump on the Lewis, they might, they might get on another mode of transport or even walk, because a walk would probably be quicker than actually getting in a taxi to go the route that you're going to have to go. Oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. It's going to, the, 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 the inevitable fallout in the long term it is going to mean another loss of income. But there again, you have a situation where the National Transport Authority just bring in rules, uh, silly rules, stupid rules, which the only people that they benefit is them. It doesn't benefit us. It, it just ends up costing us money. Ed, thanks very much. We're just arriving at the Spire now at the Gresham Hotel, so we're going to jump out, Adrian, and have a look for a couple of taxi drivers also unhappy with these proposals. Ed, thanks a million. No problem, Jamie. As we speak, a hearing by on board Planola is uh, taking place at the Gresham Hotel to... Uh, look at plans for uh, pedestrianising the whole College Green area, making a, a lovely city centre plaza. And looking at the plans, it actually looks very nice. But it's uh, not without its opposition. The amount of people complaining about this, ranging from uh, Dublin bus to uh, taxi drivers, um, pedestrians and a lot of other people actually like the idea. I'll be talking to Councillor uh, Kieran Cuff in just a couple of moments, who is fully in support of this plan. Uh, but as you heard uh, just before the break there, our Jamie uh, made his way down to O'Connell Street in a taxi, and uh, he is now down at the Gresham, where a fairly large protest is about to take place, Jamie, if it hasn't started already. Yes, Adrian, it started about 15 minutes ago. There's about 60 taxi drivers here. They're standing in front of the Gresham Hotel on O'Connell Street uh, with a big green sign that says working for full-time taxi drivers. And there's loads of taxis just parked in the bus lanes at the moment with a number of drivers standing outside the hotel with their banner. Yeah. And I'm going to speak to uh, one of them now. What's your name? Uh, Tom Burton, representing the Dublin Taxi Association. So, uh, Tom, just explain to me what we can see here, what's going on and why you're all here this morning, first of all. Well, basically, there's been an ongoing um, situation with the National Transport Authority and the, um, the Taxi Advisory Council in relation to... Um, the restrictions that's been implemented now put in place from this morning, from um, 7 till uh, 10 o'clock in the morning. And um, that's enough for the adversity affects not only the public in relation to trying to get across the city, but also taxi drivers in the place of work who are also trying to um, get passengers from A to B. And it's, it's creating, it's going to create an issue, uh, not just now, but also for the foreseeable future. Just overall, since the Lewis Cross City opened, we have to say traffic in Dublin in that area has become a lot heavier. What's it been like for you being a taxi man at the moment, being able to be in that area of town at the time of the morning that they're talking about between 7 and 10 because it has been fairly heavy with everybody taking longer to get to where they want to go than they normally would have before the Lewis arrived? Yeah, well, you know, I'm sure everybody now over the last, uh, including before the blizzard, has, has seen the congestion going, going, uh, going south from uh, O'Connell Street around by Trinity College and um, the amount of buses and, 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 and an awful lot of private cars which create not, but a serious issue and also Again, you have the Lewis, which uh, they've said themselves hasn't been really planned out too well. They're going to actually add, add extra carriages to the Lewis. Um, the situation is, either, either way, taxis you know, need to get patches from A to B. This really is going to adversely affect people, uh, businesses as well, trying to get people from the airport into town and trying to get to the hotels and to their destination. So, you know, um, it, it, it has been addressed at the moment outside where we're standing outside the Gresham Hotel. There's an oral hearing going on. And uh, we have uh, two representatives from the Taxi Alliance, Jerry Mackin, and also from the Federation, Joe Hearden, who's going to actually speak on that today. And I'm here today with uh, TTN Hayes, Dave McGuinness, also a representative of the taxi organisation. Yes, Adrian, I'm here as well beside Dave, another taxi driver. Dave McGuinness, explain to me what you think will be achieved from this meeting today, because clearly you guys want this decision to be reversed, but the people who've made the decision have made it for a reason that they feel to be a valid one. I know you disagree with that. Well... Well, we're here today to highlight the fact that people, that, that air customers are now going to be charged more money to get to the destinations that Friday, last Friday they, didn't, they wouldn't have had to pay. 
we've offered uh, a number of alternatives over the last four years to uh, Dublin City Council <laughs> and the National Transport Authority, and unfortunately, them alternatives have fell on deaf ears. They don't seem to want to. They don't seem to want taxis in the area at all, and we're not going to accept that. Just briefly, what are those alternatives that you've? suggested that the City Council have decided not to implement? Well, we've suggested an alternative route through Fleet Street and Anglesey Street. We've suggested uh, Ang uh, Eustace Street. There's a number of routes from College Green area onto the Keys. Three routes, actually, and the three of them all go one way. We're asking them to switch one of them to allow taxis access to that general part of the city. Just a final one, Adrian, before we hand back to you. What happens next if they decide, and I understand from talking to you off-air, this could go on for a week, these talks could go on for a week, That's if correct. they decide not to reverse what they've said, what happens for you guys? Is there a possibility of, of more action? Well, first of all, as Dave has, has, has just said there, uh, everything that Dave and, and, and what's being put on by the uh, Taxi Alliance or the Advising Committee, it's feasible. Them routes are feasible. Um, you know, we, we do suggest that the NTA and the Minister looks at the routes that we've suggested. Um, it, you know, you, you also have to look at um, the southbound traffic at some stage. The all hearing is around about the plaza. You know, we would be apprehensive as taxi drivers that maybe at some stage there'll be another archery block going south side to north. So, um, as they've suggested there, there is uh, feasible options there that we suggest you look at. We, we did, uh, uh, all the organisations, uh, all the taxi organisations are all one on this situation. We, we did send a letter to the minister, uh, an email to the minister, which he has received, and we're hoping to get feedback very shortly and try and resolve all issues that's on the table. And Adrian, of course, as well, it's not just taxi drivers who are upset about this. A lot of uh, the businesses, the shops and the restaurants and the pubs around town are also very upset. And I understand they're going to be making presentations here either today or later can you in the just, week as well. Uh, Jamie, can you just ask that taxi driver, does he not think that the idea of a civic plaza, of a, a you know, pedestrianised area around College Green would actually add to city life, would actually be nice for Dublin? So just on the civic plaza that they're talking about doing and having you know, no cars and only pedestrians, do you think that would add to what Dublin could be in a couple of years' time? Do you think at all it might be a good plan, a good idea, if they can route you guys elsewhere? Well, the plaza <clears throat> that they're trying to propose at the moment, is, 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 um, it has a few issues at the moment. I think Dublin Bus as well had an issue with that at one yeah. stage. You know, you, know you, look to, you look at Grafton Street, of course, people forget that it was both ways, and you know, it has brought in a lot of business to the sector. The plaza is a, is, is a good idea, it's a good suggestion. But at the same time, you know, you will have an issue in the plaza, for example, where, you know, you could have a lot of rickshaws parked in there. Yeah. And you're going to have a lot of illegal rickshaws that don't pay no tax, no insurance. You know, they're going to actually take footfalls from uh, genuine uh, drivers who are trying to earn a living around the city. So, you know, there's issues like that that need to be addressed. And, you know, we, we haven't really seen suggestions in, uh, uh, at, at the moment that's feasible to drivers and everybody at the moment and the public. Yeah. But we hope, you know, at some stage it will benefit everybody at, at some stage. Of yeah, course, the, the, the rickshaws is a totally different debate. Adrian, there's a man here called Willie beside me. I think he's actually on hold. The oh, phone, he is actually so, on the uh, other line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Willie, he's going he's gonna to speak to you on your phone there in a second. Adrian, I'm going to have a look for a couple more taxi drivers. And the crowd here is building. The one thing you would say is if you're looking for a taxi on O'Connell Street at the moment, you won't get one. There's lots of them parked here, but all the drivers are on the side of the road and uh, they're not in their cars currently because this protest, they said, will go on until they get the answers they want. And I know you said they were in the bus lane, parked in the bus lane. Are they likely to block O'Connell Street? Well, they're all parked in the bus lanes now. Now, in fairness, at the moment, all the traffic is being able to pass in the main lane. There is some guardie here at the moment. Uh, there's a red light. There's, there's a number of Dublin buses there and uh, the Lewis, of course, is going by on its tracks and some, some private buses as well. But certainly, if you want to use the bus lane or a bus wants to use it or a taxi who does want to work to use the bus lane in the next while on O'Connell Street, he won't be able to because it's blocked by all the taxis. All right. Uh, thanks very much indeed, Jamie. We'll come back to you in a while. That's 98 FM's Jamie Moore. He is down outside the Gresham where taxi drivers are objecting to uh, proposals that started uh, today. Well, it's... It was not a proposal, it was an enforcement where taxi drivers can now uh, not drive into um, across College Green from north to south uh, between 7 and 10 in the morning uh, because of the traffic chaos that there has been over the last uh, couple of weeks. Now, somebody who is in favour of the proposal to pedestrianise and make a plaza outside uh, College Green uh, is Councillor Kieran Cuff, and he joins me on the line. Uh, Kieran, welcome to 98 FM. Tell me what what you think this plaza would contribute to Dublin life. I think it'll help to unsnarl the traffic in College Green, and it'll still allow for trams, buses, bikes, and pedestrians to get through. 
Okay, so you would like to see a situation where buses and the Lewis can still travel through, but no other vehicles? Uh, that That's the view I have. Well, we will still allow taxis, but not during the morning peak where things are a bit too congested. And uh, I, But I think, uh, you know, when you look at the bigger picture, uh, it'll get more people in and out of the city centre. Uh, I think it'll increase the footfall. That'll be good for business. So I think it's a must-have project for Dublin. Now, people who are objecting to this project, um, site, uh, you know, for example, having buses do U-turns on Dame Street, um, and and just the traffic chaos that will result uh, from this one small pedestrianised area? Well, I don't think it'll be chaotic. I think it'll be well managed and it'll have to be. And in return, Dublin City will get this fantastic car-free space that will have a a fountain that children can play in in the centre. It might have an ice rink in winter. It might have uh, activities going on in summer. We're coming into St. Patrick's Week. You could have a Cayley in the middle of this uh, space. So I think it's about time that we gave a bit of space to the people of Dublin and allowed the city to breathe again. OK, but part of the problem is the, the volume of traffic that we do have in the city with taxis, with buses and with cars. And without the uh, ability to pass through the College Green area, it is going to cause traffic mayhem. I don't think so. I think it's a real bottleneck at the moment. So uh, a bit like a piece of string, a pile of string, if you unsnarl it, if you detangle it and reroute some of the buses up and down the quays, uh, if we give priority to the trams and the buses running north-south, it'll make the area safer and it'll allow the traffic that needs to be there to run more smoothly. Now, we've seen over the last couple of weeks since the Lewis Cross City began uh, the, the, the mayhem that it has caused around College Green. Uh, what would you say to uh, people who believe that this was just extremely bad planning? A trained monkey could have, uh, I, be, tra- I, I could think have planned for it better. I yeah, should, have, should have dealt with it better. Uh, I think it was not as well planned as I would like. Uh, but with the morning ban on taxis kicking in from today, traffic seems to be moving a lot more smoothly. Uh, the National Transport Authority have also taken out some of the bus routes uh, and rerouted them, which I think is a good idea because Dublin bus seems to have a homing instinct on College Green. About a third of their buses pass through it. And I think the city has changed and we don't need to have every second bus really uh, coming through that part of the city centre. Taxi drivers are very unhappy with uh, this morning's restriction. Uh, Have you any sympathy for their position? I do, of course. I use taxis a lot myself. Uh, We've sat down with them. Dublin City Council has sat down with them. We'll sit down with them again. Uh, We'll certainly listen to their views and we'll do our damnedest to accommodate them. Uh, Taxis are a really important part of the the transport uh, of the city uh, and it's crucial that their needs are recognised. Okay, but you, you, uh, as part of this proposal, support the banning of taxis driving through that area? Yeah, because in the morning peak, um, it simply doesn't make sense to have two or three taxis with maybe at best half a dozen people in them taking up the space that might be occupied by a bus with 40, 50, almost 100 people on it. So space is valuable in the city centre. We've got to prioritise the trams, the buses, uh, the pedestrians and the cyclists. And then we've got to make space for the taxis as well. But there will be times when we won't be able to allow taxis straight through in front of uh, Trinity College. In terms of um, the, the, the plaza itself, and at present we have what's called east-west traffic coming down uh, Dame Street, that would become a thing of the past. Where does that traffic go to? Well, it'll be rerouted uh, to the Keys and to the east and to the west, and some of that traffic will disappear. It's called traffic evaporation. And uh, the same arguments were made when Grafton Street was being proposed for pedestrianisation. People said the city would be chaotic and uh, there would be absolute uh, traffic congestion. That didn't happen. And it's quite similar in regard to College Green. And it's what we're seeing in other cities around Europe, where they're putting the pedestrian uh, first in the transport equation, and they're making it easier to walk, to cycle, and to take public transport around the city. Councillor Kieran Cuff, thank you very much indeed for joining us on 98FM. My pleasure. Now, let me go back to um, O'Connell Street. 98FM's uh, Jamie Moore is uh, still there. Um, Jamie, what have you got for me? Yes, Adrian, the crowd is building here and we're another couple of taxi drivers. What's your name? Keith. Keith, explain to me what your issue with this is. Well, my issue is with it now. I'm a disabled taxi driver. I've been taxiing for 12 years. 
one of the, the one things that affects me is that to be able to use a disabled toilet. Now, on Foster Place, we have a disabled toilet, which is in Starbucks, which they generously let us use. I'm not going to be able to do that. I'm going to have to find somewhere else, which there is nowhere, unless you want to park outside of Dame Street, the Spar, and then you fall foul of the traffic car and you could get a ticket. That's one point. Second point is this is going to affect a lot of disabled drivers and passengers. Where, what are they supposed to do? So at the moment, if you want to use a toilet around this area of Dublin, you go to Starbucks on Foster Place, you drive across O'Connell Bridge, you drive across the area. In the morning time now, if it's half seven in the morning, you've dropped off a fare somewhere, you want to use the toilet in that area, you can't go there. Yes, correct and right, most definitely. And is there anywhere else around the area where you can go? Uh, the only other place that you, you, you might get into or be allowed uh, would be the Starbucks on Stevens Court. But that would mean driving all around the, the it's gone up as far as where uh, Samuel Beckett Bridge and gone over that way. Which is a bit of a trek. Well, it's an extra two uh, two or more kilometres onto it. And I, I know as well, Adrian, there is disabled parking outside that Starbucks as well and that there is space to, to stop. I'm here as well with Dave. Dave, you've been driving a taxi in Dublin for 20 years. Uh, this is quite an un uncommon occurrence where the city council are telling you you can't drive in a certain area. It is indeed, uh, and we feel it, it's pretty bad because out of the public transport now, we buses are allowed to pass through still. Uh, the Lewis, as we know, and now taxi is going to be excluded, which is going to impact our working day. Um, it will have a serious impact on customers. We probably earlier mentioned about elderly passengers, disabled passengers, um, and then the local businesses also. It will also increase potentially the price that people will pay to get a taxi to these areas. So we're always expected to bring people the most direct route. Um, so we feel that we're being treated very unfairly. And if we even go back as far as the snow uh, last week, the taxi service is pretty much the only viable working form of public transport when the whole other infrastructure closed down and here yet again the taxi driver is being excluded. We've already lost quite a amount of space on taxi ranks around the city um, and this has a public safety uh, impact as well. So the safety in numbers as we say, so at the nightclub kicking out times, um, the public, your daughter, your son could queue at a taxi rank, the one here on O'Connell Street is now gone. The numbers around the corner might be about eight to ten parking spaces. Um, so people are walking the streets trying to flag a taxi down now where yeah. there were. So there's many different issues affecting our business, but the closure to College Green is just one step too far, I think. Yeah, if we can just keep it on the closure of College Green for now, and you mentioned the fares there. If I was getting a taxi with you now at the Spire on O'Connell Street or outside the Gresham Hotel to try to go to St. Stephen's Green, how much extra would it cost me in the, mi in the middle of the morning at rush hour if you have a detour and, and a long extra of a journey time if I want to get to work? I'm not sure on the exact prices, but... Remember, the public are going to have more taxis in their space also, so the overall journey time for everybody is going to be extended. And the taxi meter works on time and distance, so while we're sitting stationary stuck in heavy traffic in the morning. I don't know the exact figure, but it will be a significant both time and uh, cost increase on, on the, the public. Lastly, what's the end game here for you guys if you don't get what you want? At the moment, it's a peaceful, in fairness, very, very uh, peaceful protest just here. Stand beside the road, although there are some, some cars parked in the bus lane. What happens by the end of the week if the city council say no, it's staying? And if it does well, they may try and bring it in, we heard, between four and seven in the evening, working the other way. Well, we wanted to keep it peaceful. Um, we would like to get some public support because this issue is going to impact on everybody. But I'm sure if we don't see some reasonable compromise, things might escalate. But the union representatives, rep representatives will have to uh, deal with that and address that on behalf of the members. But if it escalates, the strike could be possible? It's quite possible, yeah. It is quite possible. There you go, Adrian. So taxi drivers here in Dublin saying if... Threatening strike action, yeah. Yes, indeed. Okay, yes, yes. all right. 98 FM's Jamie Moore. Thanks very much, Lee, for reporting for us down at uh, College, or down at uh, Connell Street where taxi drivers are protesting. Has that uh, protest become any bigger, Jamie? Uh, yes, it's uh, in and around the same since you last spoke to me. The, all the, the taxis are still stopped in the bus lane and a number of people have actually now had to get out of other taxis in the main lane of traffic in order to go about their business here on O'Connell Street, which is a little bit dangerous, but I suppose these taxi men don't have anywhere else to leave their cars and they will be going back to work after they, um, after they, they finish here. And a couple of them did say to me that they did actually try to drive the route in question this morning and they were actually stopped by Gardaí at the spot. You know where the, the guards stand normally because yes, I think yes. the, re the regular cars aren't allowed in between 7 and 7 and they were actually stopped. It would be interesting though if a taxi uh, wasn't, didn't have a fare in the car and wasn't actually working would he be able to drive there, you know, having the car as his own personal car at that hour of the morning? That would be an interesting one to ask.
All right, Jamie, thanks very much indeed. You can check out the video that Jamie sent to us of the protest on our Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash Adrian K and Jeremy D. Facebook.com slash Adrian K and Jeremy D. Now, Stacey, you were annoyed with what Kieran Cuff had to say. Why? Because he's an absolute excuse. He's a knob jockey. I have to drag a child out of bed, like many people up where I live, at 20 past six in the morning to do what should be a 20-minute, maybe 25-minute journey to get to town for nine o'clock. It's so bad. Now, this is to do with buses. Even taxis can't stop up here anymore to get people. It's so bad. And we're like, we've no bus services that I waited an hour and 10 minutes in the snow. Well, the snow was nearly melted to get on a bus. There was men shoving women out of the way. There was a fight at the bus. This morning, the bus was that overcrowded. I had to scream at the busman to stop squashing people on. A woman fell on a child. There's people left with, like me and another girl from the area are going up to try and get a TD to talk to us because it's so bad. And now they're protesting in town, so which means that I'm not going to be able, I have to leave another half an hour earlier to try and get in there because of this protest in town. Like, you think the taxi situation is bad? Ask anybody that uses the 140-40 routes or the 40D routes how bad it is. Like, you're getting docked wages, you can't get to colleges, you can't get to schools. It's disgusting. Like, you talk to every pe- person you try and get onto Shane Ross and you're ignored. Like, it's what we put up with up this area is absolutely like shocking. If you're seeing the stuff like going on up in this area trying to get bus, you're lucky to get on that. Like, okay, what, nine what do you think of the idea of a plaza, a uh, pedestrian plaza outside Trinity at College no, Green? It there? doesn't work, it's stupid. I grew up in Temple Bar, I grew up around the area. It's that I know I'm in there every day, it's not gonna work. They should never put the Lewis down there because the minute you put the Lewis adds an extra 20 minutes to half an hour on a journey, straight away trying to get a bus down that area, it's just great. It's stupid. Everyone that works in that whole area of transport should be sacked on the spot. And I, I support the taxi men protesting, but I think what has to happen is it can't just be the taxi people protesting. It needs to be all the public that use, like every public service, all the buses, all the people that work for Dublin Bus. The abuse the poor bus men get in the mornings. And it's not their fault, like, but well, people are so angry and they're giving the abuse to the bus men. The bus men are like really showing into stations asking, can you get extra buses? They're age on back saying we can't use the buses. There are buses. Like this man that's after coming over from Canada to change the system, he wants to take buses out of housing estates, which is ridiculous, and only use main roads, and to bring in single buses. Like it's like everyone has to come together and do something because we're all getting skills out, but we're all getting shit all over. All and right. So you don't like the idea of a nice uh, p- uh, pedestrianised plaza at College Green? It doesn't work. It doesn't work, all right. And finally, Willie, I know you've been hanging on there for ages. You're down at the uh, uh, at the Gresham. Uh, Willie, how uh, did this morning's restriction on taxis uh, affect you? Well, I'll be quite honest with you, Adrian. I'm a night driver, so I had to get up out of bed to uh, go on this protest. And it's a pity we haven't got a few more day drivers that we could do that. But, but Adrian, I'd love to talk to uh, Kieran Cuff there um, and ask him, uh, one of the lads had a guy in the car to consult him, who actually is from Scotland, and he flew over here and was consulting on the new Lewis line when it first started. And when they, when they consulted, when they went through all the plans and all things, the first thing they told the city council was, don't build it, the city is too small. But they still went ahead and do. And this is, this is what's happening with this city council. They're making stupid, stupid things. The, the people that use the tram, uh, Adrian, is a small percentage of what people use buses and taxis. So the small percentage of people... Yeah, sorry, uh, sorry Willie, that would be because there is a restricted amount of Lewis available. If it was going all over the city, uh, a lot more people would use it. I'm just saying the cross-city one now, not the, other, not the other ones now, just the cross-city one, Adrian. I mean, the Lewis is at the pass for me there, uh, Adrian. There's only about 10 people on it. But still, there's loads of buses on O'Connor Street here as well. Hmm. So I'm talking about the percentage that are used to Lewis and the percentage that are used to the other public transport, i.e. the taxis and the buses uh, in that vicinity. Um, it just doesn't make sense. And uh, I can't see them making money on it, uh, to be quite honest with you. But going back to the plaza, um, Adrian... Well, no, sorry, sorry Willie, it is 20 past 11 in the day. I mean, you, you stand there at 8 in the morning or uh, 6 in the evening and they're all packed, even uh, heading out towards Broombridge. Yeah. But they could they not have... have I don't know, what went underground, which was one of the proposals for them to go underground and, to, and not upset the city altogether. Everything has just been uh, thrown up in the air over this Lewis thing. We've lost ranks from all the way to Stevens Green down to O'Connor Street. 
that, that are Connor Street Rankers there since God knows when, since Adam was a boy. And next thing you come in the strike of a pen and just take all that away from us. You know, it's not fair on those. I mean, and it's not but fair. How, how, how will he do others? Every other major city in Europe has an extensive tram network that runs right through the city. And in many cases, and I've been in lots of cities around Europe, they just ditch the cars. They throw the cars to the side to let the tram fly through. Um, it works other places. Why not Dublin? That, that's fair enough. If, 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 if citizens want to uh, leave their cars at home and get public transport, by all means, it was more business for us. But what I'm saying to you is, there's, there's people that haven't, haven't got their own cars. There's people I drive around in wheelchairs could probably want to go to the Westbury Hotel. You know, how do we... I have to bring them halfway around the city to get to the Westbury now and come down Dame Street and go right at the, at the old central bank there instead of going through College Green. And it's more money. They're talking about customer savings and all this. It's more money on the customer. We're going to have to drive around an extra kilometre because we cannot go through College Green, mm. which is more money on the meter for the people. But you have to agree, uh, Willie, that the whole congestion situation at College Green has to stop. It, it, it was Now, I agree there was really bad planning, uh, but it's like crying over spilled milk. It's happened now. The Lewis is going through there. Uh, it will get priority over buses, over taxis, over everything. Um, and we have to solve that problem of the congestion around College Green. Adrian, it's, it's only the start of it. The, they'll, they'll block us from Parnell Square next. And then what are they going to do? One of them in, in this Dublin City Council even suggested bonnet uh, taxis from the bus lanes. Now, the reason people get taxis in, in rush hour is to get through the bus lanes to get to the destinations quicker. And that's one of the suggestions. Our representative, I represent taxi TTNH, our, our man David McGill's your time earlier on, sit, sat with the Dublin City Council and put, put up proposals, even put up a proposal up that we turn left onto Parliament Street, which you can't do at the moment. And that was rejected. They asked them could they come down by uh, John Gogarty's there in Fleet Street. That was rejected. So any proposal that TTNH is putting them to try and get around this situation, as you said, it's here now, there's nothing we can do about it. Exactly, yeah. So it's here now. So let's work on, on, on walking around to them and try and make it easier for people to come in. I mean, Club N, I think you were a DJ there years ago. Many, How many years ago, there, yeah. How do you get in there? How do you get into the Westbury? How do you get onto, you know, Nassau Street? Do you want to let us down Dawson Street? So... You know, it's 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 just crazy stuff. I mean, if we've got someone in a wheelchair and it's flashing rain, Adrian, they want to be dropped outside the door. Yes. Not, uh, uh, yeah, the yeah. All right, Sorry. well, we're going to watch with interest how this uh, on board, board Planola hearing uh, turns out and what the recommendation is um, uh, after hearing submissions. Uh, Willie, thanks very much indeed for joining but us. Thanks and, for uh, giving us our time anyway. No uh, problem Adrian. at all. Thanks all right, there you go. Thank That's you. Uh, their situation. They are protesting outside uh, the Gresham Hotel. And like I said, we'll keep an eye on that story over the next couple of days. This is 98 FM's Dublin Talks. 98 FM. This is 98 FM's Dublin Talks with Adrian Kennedy. Weekdays from 10 a.m. on 98 FM.